All praise is due to Allah, the only one who has complete knowledge and who brings all created things into being. I praise Allah as He is perfect in every way and He deserves praise that purifies us in this world and enables us to attain lofty ranks in the hereafter. O oh Allah, You alone deserve all praise. We find enjoyment in mentioning your praise and we can never give you adequate praise or gratitude. You alone deserve all praise. There are many times when you have granted us blessings and replaced our difficulties with ease. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. He tests his servants to show their true colors and so that they can attain true happiness. I further testify that our Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. Allah sent him with guidance and the light of truth. As a result, many good things were achieved and given prominence. O Allah, grant your commendation, protection and blessings to your messenger as well as to his family, companions and all who continue following their path. Servants of Allah, you must observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions. You must also realize that taqwa provides treatment for difficulties faced as well as light for the heart. When a person observes taqwa, Allah makes things easy for him. Observe taqwa of Allah in all situations since it provides brilliant and lasting results. When you adhere to taqwa, it would enable you to be foremost even if attaining that level may have been unexpected. Dear Muslims, life around us has returned to normal in a number of ways after the coronavirus pandemic which seized humanity at large throughout our entire world with its darkness, difficulties, infections and casualties. It has been a trial that spread far and wide. Thus we praise Allah for the fact that we now anticipate its departure as well as the coming of cure and well-being. However, none of that is at odds with remaining cautious and responsible in our return to normalcy as well as ensuring that we follow all precautionary guidelines that have been put in place. Allah the Almighty and Most Majestic said, People of Iman, remain wary. He also said, you must not kill yourselves. Allah is indeed always merciful to you. Allah further said, do not cast yourselves into ruin with your own hands. Promising signs have appeared. Thus, people should feel a sense of happiness and they should praise Allah and also affirm His greatness. Gratitude is due to Allah before and after all else. And then to the authorities who have been keen in understanding and organizing important matters. My dear brothers in Islam, we praise Allah, thank Him and humble ourselves to Him due to the blessings He has granted us. Among those blessings are the praiseworthy effects made by our blessed nation to put various measures in place pertaining to both religious and mundane issues, as well as the guidance Allah granted our nation's leadership to implement precautions to help stop the pandemic from harming our nation. All of those together have provided practical lessons in managing crises and reacting to them swiftly. Something to be taken note of, especially at the current time, is the fact that taking precautions against illnesses and epidemics is a means that Islam's teachings encourage. Thus, our return to normalcy must take place with caution, as well as full compliance with health directives and all precautionary regulations. We extend our gratitude to all security and health personnel for their efforts, and also to the general public for their awareness and cooperation. However, among people there are those who still remain reckless and those who 
exploit circumstances of the pandemic in order to spread rumors and fabrications. And unfortunately, nothing deters them besides being dealt with decisively and sternly. Therefore, servants of Allah, it must be reiterated that we must observe taqwa of Allah in general and particularly regarding the health of our own selves, our parents, our families, our children, our communities, and our nations. Protecting societies and caring for their safety and health are duties we must fulfill towards our nations. Allah is the one acquainted with all things, even the most minute of details. There are many times when He grants us blessings amidst trials He puts us through. Allah may test His servants with illness for them to recognize the true value of health and then preserve it. Health is like a crown bestowed upon those who have well-being. There's a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari in which Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with both of them, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, There are two blessings which many people lose, health and free time. In another hadith, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, If any one of you reaches the morning with his family and dwelling safe, with his health intact, and possessing his provision for that day, it is as though everything in the world was gathered and given to him. A hadith was also narrated by Al Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, may Allah be pleased with him, in which the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, stated, Beseech Allah to grant you well being in this world and hereafter. Dear Muslims, pandemics happen and eventually diminish. There have been many times when epidemics spread and then disappeared. At present, Allah has blessed us to see signs that current difficulties will soon be over after their persistence and the pain they have caused. However, we must remember that hardships and sorrows are not devoid of blessings. People of Iman recognize this. The trials of the coronavirus have afforded us a number of blessings and lessons. At the head of them is actualizing Tawheed by recognizing Allah's uniqueness and sincerely devoting all worship to Him alone. Second among the blessings and lessons is having sound beliefs and certainty about Allah's preordainment and decree concerning what He brings into existence. That provides a person of Iman with light along his path whenever major adversities are encountered. Third among the blessings and lessons is recognizing the sanctity that Allah has given to human life. Allah Himself drew attention to that by saying, I swear by the human being and by the one who created it completely suited to perform its function. Islam's impeccable teachings define an exemplary course to follow in dealing with illnesses and diseases, beginning with protection and ending with keeping the ill away from the healthy when needed. This has become quite evident in light of all that has taken place in the midst of the current pandemic. Fourth among the blessings and lessons is understanding that the individual is properly equipped to examine issues pertaining to unprecedented matters as well as consequences that may ensue are those who are firmly grounded in having sound knowledge of Islam and known for the depth of their insight. Those are individuals whose decisions are only made after deliberation, consultation, research and discussion, not based on recklessness, subjectivity, impulsiveness or desire for prominence. When dealing with such issues, there is no place for imposters who claim to have knowledge, let alone individuals known for advocating what is incorrect. We are all to exercise caution and fulfill our responsibilities in order to overcome challenges. Dear Ummah of Islam, fifth among the blessings and lessons is our Ummah being aware of its duties towards its nations and communities, especially in terms of maintaining public safety and health. When it comes to building our nations, nothing proves as effective 
as holding the correct aqidah, unwavering beliefs taught by Islam, and governing according to Islam's directives. And then also maintaining a strong connection between the public and leaders and authority, upholding dignified values, and avoiding disobedience to Allah and blameworthy issues in general, since sins and wrongdoing certainly lead to greatly adverse consequences. Caring for our nation is a collective responsibility and a trust that we all share. Therefore, we must fulfill that at the current time by returning to normalcy with caution and by following all protective directives and guidelines that have been issued. These have to take place with coordination at the international level in order to halt this dangerous pandemic. And certain efforts of our blessed nation can serve as an example to be followed. Dear Ummah of Iman, yet another of the blessings and lessons from the trial of this coronavirus is understanding that public awareness is a duty prescribed by Islam's teachings, a moral responsibility, an obligation towards society, and a component of having civilized values. It is something that only increases nations in advancement and development. That is why we must foster this awareness among the coming generation in their learning centers, schools, and universities. Additionally, some of the most prominent fruits produced by going through this trial are recognizing the unity fostered by our religion, manifesting the brotherhood taught by Islam, and understanding the depth of the bond between people in all parts of the world. Personal motives and mundane interests disappeared, while cooperation, care, support, and togetherness came to the forefront, making people all together like one single community. This has manifested the meanings found in the statements of Allah, including the people of Iman are to be nothing besides brothers. As well as mankind, we certainly created you from one male and one female. Thereafter, we made you into peoples and tribes so that you would be able to know and identify each other. Indeed, the most honorable of you to Allah are those who observe taqwa most. Allah certainly has complete knowledge of all things and He is fully acquainted with even the most minute of details. This defines what the land of the two holy mosques strives to uphold among its people in particular towards Muslims and their causes and also towards humanity at large. It endeavors to make international peace and security tangible realities. Furthermore, the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center is nothing less than a shining example of the stance held by our blessed nation and the concern that its leaders have for supporting the causes of Islam and its people in all places, as well as supporting humanitarian and relief efforts in general. The center's efforts are recognized and appreciated by the fair-minded, and it deserves to be shown solidarity in fulfilling its message in the realms of relief, health, and humanitarian work. Cooperating leads to strength and upliftment. It builds true men and nurtures ingenuity. We can find a role model in the companions. They expended tremendous efforts and sought no compensation from others in return. We beseech Allah to bless the efforts being made, guide the steps taken, and render the deeds performed as ones which are sincerely devoted to Him. Allah indeed hears our prayers and He responds. May Allah bless all of us by the magnificent Qur'an and may He enable us to glean benefit from the evidences and wisdom it contains. I say this much and I implore Allah, the most magnificent and majestic, to forgive myself and you for all sins. Thus you should also seek His forgiveness and repent to Him since He is continually forgiving. All praise is due to Allah for His continuous favors and for blessing us with the loftiest of directives and values in the religion He prescribed. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I testify that our Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. O oh Allah, grant your commendation, protection, and blessings to your messenger, as well as to his virtuous family, esteemed companions, and all who continue following their path until the end of this world. 
Servants of Allah, you must continue observing taqwa of Allah as he rightfully deserves by fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions. Taqwa is the strongest thing a person can hold on to and it uncovers many realities. In addition, be grateful to Allah for allowing you to now be in a virtuous place during a virtuous time. It is one of the months of Hajj and one of the inviolable months. Allah said, indeed, the number of months Allah decreed is 12 months recorded with Him since the day He created the heavens and the earth. Among them are four which are inviolable. Therefore, beware of wronging yourselves during them by disobeying Allah. Always remember the day when people will be held to account and no wealth, offspring or fortress will provide any protection against Allah's punishment. My dear brothers who have Iman, one of the blessings that Allah has conferred upon the land of the two holy mosques, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, is serving these sacred sites and the worshippers who come to them as guests of Allah. With that in mind, a prudent decision was made to allow a limited number of people to perform Hajj. This allows for two important matters to be achieved. One is facilitating the performance of Hajj, which is a major act of worship in Islam. And the other is protecting Allah's guests in terms of their health and safety. The decision was made based on the texts of Islam as well as the objectives of Islam's teachings regarding the preservation of human life. Among the foundational principles of Islam's teachings are bringing about what is advantageous while averting what is disadvantageous, removing harms, preserving human life, and not exposing people's lives to diseases and dangers. Hence, since Hajj is an essential part of Islam, as well as an honor that Allah has granted our blessed nation, the nation's leadership places preserving people's health at the head of its priorities. The nation's decision was welcomed and supported by Islamic and international organizations and all favor ultimately belongs to Allah. Furthermore, it is imperative for all to comply with the decision made in order to preserve public health and safety. The decision is a praiseworthy one. Those who made it did something praiseworthy and those who comply with it would be praiseworthy for doing so. We implore Allah to grant the land of the two holy mosques longevity and providing an example to be followed for generations to come. We further implore Allah to safeguard all lands of Muslims as well as the world at large against all diseases and ills. Allah is indeed the best whom we can ask. May Allah grant all of you His mercy. In conclusion, bear in mind the instruction that Allah gave us when He said, Indeed Allah grants His commendation to the Prophet and the angels invoke Allah to grant him even further commendation. People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. In addition, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, If someone invokes Allah's commendation for me once, Allah will grant commendation to that person ten times as a result. O oh Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your worshipping servant and messenger Muhammad. O oh Allah, be pleased with his four rightly guided successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali. O oh Allah, we implore you to be pleased with all of the companions and those who continue following their path. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and those who submit to you in Islam. O oh Allah, Lord of all creation, we call upon you and beseech you to grant us safety in our lands. We beseech you to grant us protection in our nations 
and make our authorities people who are righteous individuals. Support our leader with the truth and all that is correct. O Allah God, our leader, to do what pleases you and grant him righteous aids who direct him to what is right and assist him in accomplishing it. O Allah God, our leader, his deputy, and their aids to all channels that would produce goodness for your servants and their lands. O Allah, you are the ever-living, self-sufficient sustainer of all. We call upon you to grant us your care and to set all matters in order for us. O Allah, we implore you to not leave us to ourselves for even the blink of an eye. O Allah, protect all that the people of Islam hold sacred. O Allah, safeguard our Masjid al-Aqsa and allow it to be a place that is revered until the end of this world. O Allah, we beseech you to grant your protection to your obedient servants. O Allah, we beseech you to set matters in order for our brothers in Palestine, Iraq, Yemen, the region of Sham, Burma, and in all places. O Allah, grant your direction to our security personnel. O Allah, grant your protection and direction to all of our health personnel. O Allah, grant your guidance and direction to those who work to serve your servants and those who come to perform Hajj. O Allah, grant your protection to our brothers who defend the borders of our nation. O Allah, grant them your reward, accept their martyrs, cure their ailing, and allow them to return to those whom they have left behind in a state of safety and well-being. O Allah, we beseech you to avert from us all harms and ills. We ask this for ourselves and for our brothers in all lands of those who submit to you in Islam. O oh Allah, we seek refuge in you against all diseases and ailments. O oh Allah, we implore you to remove the coronavirus pandemic that we are facing. O oh Allah, we call upon you to cure our ailing and all of those who have been affected by the coronavirus. Our Lord, grant us goodness in this world, grant us goodness in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. O Allah, we implore you to accept our repentance and to grant us your forgiveness. O Allah, grant your forgiveness and mercy to those who submit to you in Islam, the alive and deceased, as well as all who Strive to obey you and comply with your directives, and all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.